Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on Superman and Lois Season 3. So we are officially at the one week mark. Seven days until the return of Superman and Lois to our screens for its third season. And you know, this season appears like it has the potential to be the best season yet with our characters in. You know, there's certain positions that we're always meant to be in, if that makes sense, for these specific characters, at least the main ones, when we did start the series. You know, Clark is now back into journalism and working alongside his wife Lois at the Smallville Gazette. Jordan has emerged with his Superboy powers and, the, you know, the past, at least of the couple of Superman and Lois, mainly Lois from Metropolis, will be lingering in the background this season and emerging to bring about more issues and uh, maybe the issues are greater than what they were before in the past. And, you know, this might connect to some moments and events we have seen in previous seasons as well. So, yeah, I'm uh, pretty damn excited to have the show back. And uh, due to that, we have some stuff that is coming our way or coming out of the show, which has to do with some stuff relating to the starting portion of season three, the first handful of episodes, but also to do with the conclusion of the episodes and the conclusion of filming for season three. So let's go over it all and discuss it. But of course, throughout the video, be sure to let me know in the comments section down below your various thoughts, any theories, any predictions, or just your overall opinions on this stuff. Always curious to read what you guys are thinking. And of course, want to show your support, enjoy the video, everything like that. Drop a like, takes two seconds. So the first thing to go over is actually the episode two synopsis or description for season three. This episode is otherwise in, uh, is otherwise called or entitled Uncontrollable Forces. So yeah, interesting title, but this is what the synopsis says. Clark and Chrissy both notice a small crack in Lois's game face. Meanwhile, Sarah and Jordan have an awkward encounter Lastly, Lana receives a panicked phone call. So the first thing to note, this episode is actually directed by Elizabeth Henstridge. Henstridge, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. She directed an episode last season, I think it was. Was it season one? No, I'm pretty sure it was season two. So yeah, she directed an episode last season, I think it was. But in regards to this synopsis, I think it's pretty clear. It's very spoiler free. It's not revealing much if anything at all. The only thing that it sort of doesn't even reveal, it just sort of teases it potentially. And that is something in regards to Lois and having a small crack in her game face. And I think this would have to do with a potential run-in with Bruno Mannheim or just his name being mentioned and just an update on him from someone else, you know, talking about him or maybe talking to him on the phone, something like that. As we know, Bruno Mannheim is Lois's uh, white whale when it comes to her journalism uh, journalism career, the one that she never got to take down, just the guy she wasn't able to, you know, investigate hard enough and really expose him and stuff like that. And maybe now he has even more connections and more power than before, which would worry her seeing how hard he was to try and take down previously. Now, we don't know what the time gap is necessarily going to be between the last time she encountered Bruno to this season. Is it 10 years? Is it 15 years? Is it 20 years? We know that Bitsy Tullock did post something on Instagram on her stories that she was filming a flashback scene which would have been for like episode 11 or 12 probably which I think she said like around 20 years in the past so it could have been like 15 to 20 somewhere in that frame so that might have been the last time she encountered Bruno or it might have been one of the first times she encountered him and that's a flashback but then again that might have to do with Lex Luthor who knows but I am very interested to see how this season starts off because last season started off really quickly because we all had like the Doomsday, Mr. X, and then Bizarro coming in and everything like that. And then it sort of slowed down. So I do wonder what the pacing for this season is going to be like because I think I would rather it be just sort of medium pace, but it's just very consistent and then it builds up throughout the season rather than start off ridiculously fast and then slow down. But then again, that just depends on the person. You might like what they did last season in regards to the pacing. I didn't hate it. I just know that other people didn't really like it. But let's get into some other news pieces. So Superman and Lois's season three finale. Now the title, and this isn't confirmed, the title is from what people can try and piece together is apparently what kills you only makes you stronger. Now this isn't confirmed from what I can tell people are picking this from a script cover that was picked for the season three finale. It said three by 13 or something like that, which we know there's only 13 episodes for this third season. And the first three words were what kills you. And then the fourth word, you could only see one letter and it looked like an O. So a lot of people think it's what kills you only makes you stronger, which it's sort of the classics, um, you know, or you actually, the, the saying is what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger, but this could maybe be a reference to like, maybe like a doomsday thing, which is weird because they tease doomsday, but like that's what happens with doomsday. If he gets killed is now then like impervious to that when he gets reborn again. So I don't know if that's a doomsday reference. I'm not too sure. We'll have to wait and see, but yeah, 
we know that at least the first three words of the season three title have what kills you. So keep that in mind. Is it what kills you only makes you stronger? We'll wait and see. But one other thing for the season three finale is that Rebecca Starb, I think that's how you pronounce it, is... I don't know if she's just being cast specifically for the finale or she's just within the finale because I haven't heard about this casting before, but Rebe Rebecca Starb is in the season three finale for Superman Lois. Many think that she might be playing Eve Tessmarker, saying that we have uh, Lex Luthor coming to the back half of the season. However, there are some people that do think that she might be playing Lois's mother, uh, who her name, I think is Elle or Ella, I think it is. That's the name of the character, Ella or Elle Lane, something like that. Um... But people think she might be playing that because, of course, Lois's mother sort of just got up and left them. And that was sort of a, a story point last season when Lucy Lane, came, uh, Lucy Lane sorry, came back into the show. So that might be who she's playing and she shows up at the end of season three. Or maybe she is playing Eve Tessmarker. If this is a Lex Luthor that's been around for like 20, 25 years or something then she could easily be that character. Some other people might were saying that she might be Mercy Graves. Who knows? It could be a mix of everything but maybe something revolving around Lex or something to do with Lois and stuff like that. And a fun fact that she was Sue Storm or the Invisible Woman in that Fantastic Four movie from the 90s, you know, the one that was like, didn't actually come out, but there's been like bootleg copies of it. That's who she is. She's Sue Storm in that movie. So that's a bit of a fun fact. And the last thing to go over in this video is some scoops from TV Line. So TV Line does like their inside line or whatever it's called. And usually they only drop like one thing from each show or something or certain questions. But last week, yes, yeah, within the past week or so, roughly, they dropped three and they all deal with like different things. So let's go over them. So the first one is, do you have any scoop on whether we'll see more Lois and Clark romantic scenes in Superman and Lois season three? That's coming from Mary. And they say, let's just say the first scene leading out of a recappy season opening montage makes clear that the twosome just had some downright uh, super sex, shall we say. Oh, and at another point, they super speed away for a nooner. So let's not get into any terminology because I can just smell the YouTube copyright system going, hey, demonetize. But uh, yeah, take that for what you will. The next thing, what can you tell us about the new family fortress and its role in season three of Superman Lois? That coming from Sharan or Sharon, not too sure how you pronounce that, but anyway. I can tell you that Kal-El's mom very much approves the new digs and that this fortress has a feature that will absolutely delight eagle-eyed DC Comics super fans. Hmm, I wonder what they could be. I don't think it's going to be like, I guess it could be, but then again, I think the, well, the Earth... The one on the Earth of Superman and Lois didn't have any sort of like relics, did it? I don't think it had any like relics in the Fortress of Solitude, but the Bizarro World one did, I'm pretty sure. So maybe this new Fortress of Solitude has some like, you know, relics and stuff from people that Superman is versed or whatever it might be, similar to like Batman's Batcave. I'm not too sure. We'll wait and see. Obviously, it's hard when they just say it like that. And then when we actually get to watch the episode, we're we'll like, oh, that's what they were talking about. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I mean, what could it be? If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments section down below what you think the feature is that will uh, delight the eagle-eyed DC Comics super fans. Because I can't think of anything off the top of my head because it could be a plethora. Um, but yeah, I'm sure we'll obviously see it when it shows up. So we'll wait and see, I guess. And the final thing is, any news about Jordan's storyline in Superman Lois Season 3? That coming from Mark, aka Chillblain. Oh, that Jordan, he gets a literal crash course on the nuance, the nuances sorry, of flying early on in the season premiere. He also may want to bone up on physics before trying to fix a falling construction crane with his heat vision. And it's also going to take him a minute to accept what he and Sarah are slash aren't anymore. So we've had that teased in the trailer. It's like, I think it's Jordan going off on his own to deal with like, I think it's an oil rig that's on like, um, on fire pretty much. Like there's, a, I guess an oil leak and then it catches on fire and the whole oil rig is sort of like burning up and everything's melting around it. I think it was because it looked like it was over some water, but then again, it might be a construction scene, a uh, construction site near like a harbor or something. I'm not too sure. But in the trailer, it looks like Superman comes and saves the day and stops everything looking like crap. And then, and Jordan taking a massive L. Like Jordan still takes an L, but Superman sort of gives it, makes it like a bit of a minor L or something like that. So we see that in the trailer. Um, I think that's the thing I'm interested about this season with Jordan is him wanting to take ownership of it. And I think Clark or Superman is going to respect that, but at the same time be like, well, you still need that mentor. You know, like I still technically had that because, you know, Clark went away 
to the Fortress of Solitude and train with his dad there. Jordan's sort of trying to train to be like his dad, like Superman, but mixing it in with his normal life as well. And there's not that much dedication there. So that's definitely an aspect of not just the season, but just Jordan specifically that I'm very interested to see play out, especially in these early, you know, two, three, four episodes, you know, the first like quarter of the season. I'm interested to see how that plays out because I think we'd expect Jordan to not grow rapidly throughout the season or develop rapidly, but develop a decent portion from beginning to end. So that's something I'm very curious about. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. If you could drop a like on to show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions about all the stuff we went over in this video. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.